And just like that, your Baltimore Ravens will be hosting the AFC Championship game. Literally, the Baltimore Ravens are one game away from going to the Super Bowl. That, that's got to be a great feeling for us as fans. So imagine how them, as the players, as the coaching staff, as a front office, how all of them are feeling right now because they are that much closer to the ultimate goal. That much closer. Team Keep It Clean, we're here to share our post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched together between those Baltimore Ravens and those hot, coming in hot, Houston Texans. Before we get into it, we are nine subscribers away. As of this recording, we are nine subscribers away from 73K. I appreciate the way y'all have been subscribing. Keep on doing it. Let's keep on growing. Let's keep on moving. So we're very, very close. And then we go to the next goal, but let's get to this goal first. I appreciate y'all. Also, leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a lot. It helps spread the word a lot. It just it, it goes a long way. So I appreciate y'all. Now, one of the ways I show y'all that I appreciate y'all is by putting y'all on. If I get put on, then I got to put y'all on too. And Heart of the City Clothing with the Run to Vegas hoodie. Hit them up. Hit them up. Because this thing is clean, baby. I think I might have to wear it next week when we up at M&T Bank Stadium for the AFC Championship game. I can't wait. Like, but anyway... Anyway, the link is in the description. Use code engraving to get 20% off your entire order. Hit them up ASAP. So, these Baltimore Ravens, they ended up beating, beating the Houston Texans 34 to 10. I don't know if we start with the offense or the defense first. Let's start with the defense. The defense, the, the Texans did not have one single drive inside the 25-yard line. Not one single play inside the 25-yard line. That is insane. That is crazy. When you like really sit down, step back, and think about that, that is crazy. The Texans scored a whopping 10 points. Their offense scored three. Three points the entire game. This offense just scored 45 minus 14 last week. So that's 31. They scored 31 points last week. Had to take off the two pick sixes. But they scored 31 points last week against the number two defense. And against the Baltimore Ravens, they scored three, 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 and that's it. Mike McDonald, again, I will be surprised if he is still Baltimore Ravens coach next year. Again, the only way I see him staying now, especially after a performance like that, really after the performance he's been doing all year long, man, but especially after a performance like that, like, that just made his resume look that much better, look that much greater, and just gave him another accolade, just another accomplishment. But the only way that I see him staying, the only way I see him staying with the Baltimore Ravens, is Ravens win the Super Bowl, and then John Harbaugh decides, you know what, I'm going to step back in the front office or something, and then they promote Mike McDonald to head coach. That's the only way I see him staying with the Ravens this year. That's it. So, we'll see. But anyway, that defense, um, CJ, Str 175 yards passing. And I think they only gave up 38 yards rushing. Let me see. Yeah, 38 yards rushing. They gave up 38 yards rushing. No touchdowns. One field goal. There was a missed field goal too. But that is amazing. It's defense, like, they shut it down. And you would have thought, especially the way, like, adjustments or everything. Uh, I remember in the first half, Nico Collins. Oh, he was so annoying. <laughs> he was so annoying. And it was like Nico Collins and Dalton Schultz. Those two, those were the main two because they just kept getting open. They kept making catches. C.J. Stroud kept getting it to both of them. And it was like, oh, my goodness, please don't let this keep going on. It was so frustrating. It was annoying. It was like, man, come on now. Second half, I don't know what their numbers were in the second half, but it seemed like they got a lot quieter. We really didn't hear much from them at all in the second half. I remember Nico Collins caught a screen late in the game when the game was pretty much over. They threw him a screen real quick, but we didn't really hear much from them. Mike McDonald already had the defense great. They held the Texans to three points in the first half, but he still made adjustments. He made this great defense even greater in the second half. That is crazy, man. That, he's gone. <laughs> he, he's gone. I want him to stay. I want him to remain with the Baltimore Ravens, but uh, I, I think he's out of there. Well, again, unless that other thing happens that we talked about earlier, but we'll see. Um, but defense, amazing. Kyle Hamilton, he almost, almost had a pick, almost. Um, but really, C.J. Stroud, there were not any, besides that one pick, there weren't any other almost interceptions by him. C.J. Stroud is an amazing quarterback. He, he is going to be great for a long time um, because he just he does everything the right way, man. 
Um, he does not fold under pressure. Um, he makes really, really, really good decisions. Uh, he just, he's going to be really, really good, man. This team, this Texans team, I, I did not expect them to be in the playoffs this year. Uh, especially when you, if you drafting a quarterback super high, then I, I would never expect you to be in the playoffs. Because you drafted a quarterback that high for a reason. Your team was really bad the previous year. I, I did not expect a turnaround like that. Um, so shout out to the Texans because they got to the playoffs. They had a home playoff game and won. And they, yeah, they had an amazing season. So good, good for them. But it had to end here. It really did. Uh, it, it had to. And it's nothing personal against the Texans. Um, but Baltimore Ravens, they, 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 they got unfinished business. They got some stuff that they got to take care of. Texans were just, just in the way a little bit. Special teams. Um, Justin Tucker hit a 52-yard field goal. Uh, and Ray Lewis, you know, Ray Lewis had to give himself a little shout-out on Twitter. He was like, oh, Justin Tucker hit a 52-yard field goal. And he had hashtag RL52. Uh, but shout-out to, <laughs> shout to Ray Lewis. <laughs> but um, and shout-out to Justin Tucker. Uh, the... The Texans, they kicked, they got one field goal. I think it was a 50 yard. I forgot how long it was. But then they kicked the second field goal and he missed it. He missed it. So that was nice. That was, that was really nice. I loved it. But then um, the punt return. That was when, on the punt return that the Texans got for a touchdown, the Ravens, they had missed an opportunity. And we're going we gonna to talk about the offense in a little bit. But the offense, they had a chance to go up 17 to 3. Before halftime, they had a big opportunity. It was right there in front of them. They couldn't execute. They couldn't get the job done. So it was 10-3. to 3. Uh, Ravens had to punt the ball. So they punted the ball. And number 82 for the Texans, he ran it all the way back. And I remember thinking, like, oh, boy. oh, I, I, do, I do feel confident that my Ravens are going to get it done, that they're going to take care of business. But I just don't like how this game is going. You do not want to let – it's one thing if you it's one thing if you let a bad team hang around, but if you let a good team hang around, ooh, that, that's even scarier. So it was like, man, the score is 10-10. I'm like, uh, I don't like this. Texans ain't scored a single point in the second half. Not one. Not one. Mike McDonald, you are amazing. Todd Monken, switching to Ravens offense. Uh, Ravens offense in the first half. Um, they first they end up getting a, a field goal, uh, and then on the touchdown drive, like it's, it's like it, the first couple of drives they were moving the ball. First drive obviously ended in a field goal, then ended on, in a touchdown. But they were showing like, hey, we are moving the ball. Then their next drive, I think they got the touchdown. That was when uh, he threw it to Nelson Aguilar for the touchdown. Lamar threw to Nelson Aguilar for the touchdown. And it was like, all right, let's get it. But after that, it was rough. It was, it, it was rough. Um, the offense, they just stopped. The, uh, really, the offensive line, that was the biggest issue, in my opinion. The offensive line was terrible in the first half. They were all kinds of bad. It, it was just embarrassing. It's it almost like they were letting Lamar get hit on purpose or something. Like they were letting guys through just to see, all right, Lamar, what you going to do? Yeah, show, show these people what you're going to do, Lamar. We're going to let these guys through. We're going to let, let them pass, and then you, you take care of the rest. Of it. Uh, it's just like, oh, boy, here we go. Um, and then we saw too in the first half there was a lack of the checkdowns because a lot of those routes still it's like all right everybody go deep running backs and all because there were some plays when when Lamar would get hit or he get sacked and there was no body like within five yards of him it was just empty it was like oh oh okay okay but hey maybe Munkin felt like hey uh, we got control of this game and once we let this thing loose oh yeah we got it. Maybe he was putting out feelers for the Texans' defense. I don't know. But, hey, second-half adjustments went crazy, ain't they? They went crazy. Ooh, they really, really did. And Lamar started going off. The offense started going off, and they ain't look back. And I loved it. I, I, I loved it. Lamar Jackson with that beautiful touchdown pass to Isaiah Likely. He threw it now a couple plays before. He almost threw that pick. I said, ooh, ooh, Lamar, you trying it. You trying it. But he – um. He got it back, and uh, Isaiah Likely, on on that play where Lamar almost threw that pick, Isaiah Likely, he went, and I guess he was telling him, hey, put it up for me. Put it up. Put it up for me, and, and why? I, I got you. And Lamar put it up for him. Isaiah Likely got it. You know, Mark Andrews was watching like, man, wish I could have been out there, man. Uh, and you know what? You know what worried me a little bit? 
Because I don't believe in jinxes. I don't believe that anything that anybody says controls the outcome of the game. It has anything to do with it or whatever. But one thing I can't, one thing I don't like seeing, I don't know if, if this bothers y'all too, but sometimes when they just put record after record after record up, oh, like, oh, uh, the Baltimore Ravens never hosted the AFC Championship before. Um, there was another one about, oh, they were like, oh, well, Mark Andrews, th- it was always the plan for Mark Andrews uh, to come back for the AFC Championship game. Uh, not this game, so but the Baltimore Ravens, they obviously got to make it first. When they keep putting out stuff like that, I'd be like, ah, I just, ah, like, look, I, I, I know my guy's going to get it, but I don't like seeing stuff like that. I don't be liking seeing it, but anyway, um, so Mark Andrews, he got a, a week to rest this week, and now he got another opportunity, another opportunity to make his comeback. So we'll see how that goes, but Lamar Jackson, um, touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar in the first half, Isaiah Likely in the second half, and then he was like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do the other ones myself. I got this. So the Baltimore Ravens, they were running that ball effectively. I think they said Texans had the sixth-ranked rush defense. But the Baltimore Ravens, they got the number one rush offense. And uh, their offense ended up beating the Texans defense. They rushed for 229 yards. 229 yards. Lamar had 100 even. Uh, Justice Hill had 66 Gus Edwards had 40, and Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook, he had that big run uh, for 19 yards, but he had 23 yards total. So, hey, they they were getting it, man. And again, it's lovely to see the Baltimore Ravens get it in so many different ways. Um, That third quarter, and fourth quarter, too, it was everything, because that was just where the Ravens' offense, they started taking off. And again, they didn't look back. They put the Texans away. That's what we talking about, baby. They put them away. They put them away. They did not leave it up to chance. They were not like, all right, well, we'll score a little bit, and then we'll chill. No, no. They put that game away. Really, the defense had them put away all game, but offense was like, we're going to chill the first half. We were a little rusty. Uh, rust versus rest, remember? But anyway. Uh, they were like, no, this ain't 2019. This ain't that team. These are not those players. These are not the coaches that were. Some of the coaches, but a lot of them different. A lot of everybody is different. So much change has happened from uh, back then to right now. But uh, this was a game where the, that, the ball was spread out a lot. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different pass catches. Zay Flowers had four for 41. I thought he was going to get a touchdown this game. He didn't. And there was, it, he had some really nice uh, plays after the catch. I mean, what's new is Zay Flowers, but um, he was just like that, man. He was just like that, just making people miss, and he's just amazing, man. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he had three catches for 39 yards. Great contested catches, too. So shout out to Bate for that. Isaiah likely had two catches. Both his catches were huge, too, because he caught that catch at uh, the beginning of the second half, and he gave, he gave that Texans defender a stiff arm. Now, the, the, the Texans defender still did bring him down. So shout out to him for, for hanging on for the ride. But Isaiah likely gave the Ravens offense life uh, with that play. And then, of course, the uh, touchdown catch. Justice Hill, he had two catches for 11 yards. Charlie Kohler had one for four. And Gus Edwards had one where he lost a yard. But, hey, a catch is a catch. So the ball is getting spread around. Um, and... That's just important. It's important that different guys do different things, that y- your offense is just, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's unpredictable. You can't, be, you can't just cover one person or double one person and be like, all right, we're going to take him out. No. This offense ain't like that. It's really not. They have some guys who are featured guys, guys who've been making plays, but you try to take them guys out, they still got other guys that'll step up. So, that's what it's all about. So shout out to Todd Munkin for making his second half adjustments. That was a, a wonderful thing. John Harbaugh is a troll. Um, he threw the challenge flag on that play where it was not even close to a fumble. I think he was just messing with the Texans a little bit. Maybe he just wanted to call. Maybe he wanted to get some extra time for a timeout or something like that. I don't know. But Harbaugh, you a troll, man. You a troll for sure. Uh, but this was a game. Uh, another big thing about this game Ravens came out healthy. They came out healthy. So that was big. That's huge, especially in really in any game you come out healthy, but especially playoff time and a cold, hard-hitting game like that, and you come out healthy, oh, yeah, great stuff. 
Now, um, now we wait. We wait to see who the Baltimore Ravens play, whether it's going to be the Chiefs, whether it's going to be the Bills. We are going to see. Um, that is going to be a really, really good game, in my opinion. I think it's going to be a really close one. I think the Bills are going to end up taking it, uh, but, hey, we'll see. That's why the games are to be played because uh, it's any given Sunday, in this case, any given Saturday. And, I mean, football games are played literally every single day of the week. Um, but yeah, this was a great one, but it, it's nice. It's nice when you put in a lot of hard work and then you get to reap the benefits of the hard work that you put in. What I'm talking about is the Baltimore Ravens regular season. They put in a whole lot of work and they put in enough work to get them to 13 wins, 13 wins. And they got the number one seed home field advantage through the playoffs. There were a lot of people that didn't want that. There were some people who said, oh, no, I don't want the number one seed. I don't want them to rest the day. I don't want them to have the bye week. Da, da, da. Okay, cool, whatever, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But the Baltimore Ravens work, they're seeing the results of their work pay off because they had home field advantage tonight. They won tonight. So now they're, they're done for now. They're chilling for now, and they're waiting to see who their opponent is. But guess what? They ain't got to do no travel. They ain't got to hop on no plane. They ain't even got to hop on a bus because for all the work that they put in during the regular season, it's paid off because you and then you won tonight and now you get another home playoff game, another home playoff game. So everything that they did, it worked out. And one thing about this Baltimore Ravens team this year, what they've shown us, what they've been doing is that when an opportunity presents itself, when an opportunity is right in front of them, they take it. They take it. In years past, there's been times where they haven't taken it. But this year, they took it. And we just waiting for them to continue taking it and take it all the way to Vegas. All the way to Vegas. We want these boys to run to Vegas like the theme of this hoodie from Heart of the City. Again, go check the link in the description. Order yours now and use code engraving to get 20% off. Team Keep It Clean, um, this has been an amazing season it's been a wonderful season the playoffs started with a bang today well yesterday actually but um we ain't done yet ravens ain't done yet we got two more games to go two more wins to go not just two more games but two more wins ravens know what they gotta do we know what they gotta do everybody knows what they gotta do it's just a matter of getting it done team keep it clean just like the Houston Texans are now when it comes to being in the playoffs, we out.